Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Spin Cycle Podcast, a uh, podcast talking to the people, brands, and the groups that make the UK and London uh, an incredible place to be a cyclist. Uh, today, we've actually got an old friend of ours. You might know him as Dan Richards, One Arm Wonder. Uh, he's a really good friend of ours, uh, brand ambassador for Black Sheep, mental health advocate. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Dan Richards. Mm. No. Yeah, hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah, <laughs> mouthful of water then. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right, man. Well, uh, we you know, generally do this with, generally do this with everyone, but um I know a little bit about your background, but I don't think a lot of people do. Um Yeah. Why don't you tell us who you are as a person, how you got into cycling, and really some of the, the milestones that you've done because some of them are actually pretty incredible achievements, and I and I genuinely think people really don't know that much about what you've done in your past. Yeah, well, thank you. I'll, I'll take the compliment. Thank you very much. But um, so, who am I as a person? So, uh, do you know what I think as a as a as a roundabout kind of thing uh, label, if you like. I've always thought I'm a massive extrovert. Um, although I read something the other day on the internet, you know, take it with a pinch of salt, I guess. I'm an introverted extrovert, um, whatever that means. Um, like having a laugh, I take I take the piss out of myself as much as I do everyone else. Um, you know when the audience fits, but um, I'm just happy go lucky really. And I think the way I live my life is kind of there was for those that don't know there was there was a well and we'll get into this later on I, I imagine, but there was a significant event really that happens to me a number of years ago which kind of realigned my values and my life and how i live yeah. it and you know so don't want to give too much away this early on in it so uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think one i wonder should give it away do you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> so like Keep in so like i so i've seen some photos right they're not for the they're not for the shy so you were in the British Army. Yeah, you were living your life. You were saying, "I want to be a soldier. This is what I've got for my career. This is, you know, fits you square peg, square hole." And then, like you said, your whole life changed. Right? What was that kind of event? And the after things that you did are pretty incredible too, right? Like what mm. that put you into, the, how that catalyst of of your your event, your life event, that, the catalyst for that's pretty incredible too, right? Yeah. So. So yeah, like you just mentioned, yeah. So I spent yeah, all up. It was ten years in the British Army, and, and you know, for me growing up, that's all I was ever really interested in. I, I was about eight years old when I told mum and dad, you know, when I'm old enough. My dad was in the army. When I'm old enough, mm. I want to be like dad, and you know, because I, I was I was brought up around that environment, so I was always seeing dad in his yeah. uniform and going off to work. You know, the you know yeah. the, the, the friendships that he had and stuff, and the friends that would come around. I mean, I was like, mum met my dad when I was four. Um, and um it's yeah so that early on being exposed to that it was just kind of a natural progression for me if you like, like i was never coerced into it i was never groomed or whatever whatever buzzwords there are but mm. um it was always a it was always a kind of a, tra a trajectory that i was naturally going on i was always playing yeah. you know we at that age living living on a on a military garrison um you, you know, you're, you're surrounded by it, whether you're at school. Like, I remember our playground at school looked out onto, you know, a, a very little bit of Salisbury Plain. And Salisbury Plain is just a massive military training area. Um, yeah. yeah. And so you'd see, like, the soldiers training and, 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 and patrolling and stuff. And and it just kind of solidified, if you like, at such a young age. That's what I want to do. It looks really cool. And, yeah. you know, if for anyone that's been in the military like yeah yes you take it with a pinch of salt but you know for someone as as starry eyed as wide eyed as me at the time i was like yeah that's what i want to do and it's good and always to play with my friends you know running around long grass and bushes making stupid gun noises and stuff and and whatnot and yeah. Yeah. don't get me wrong you know those formative years 
like any like any kid basically i was always toy with different you know career career kind of paths you know i'll be a vet or a doctor or astronaut or whatever but I always come back to the military and and so i guess going through school certainly secondary school um you know which i struggled with a lot um just didn't want to be there um yeah and and, and being bullied like relentlessly um mm. i mm. i um yeah, whilst all my all, all my sort of friends at school were kind of trying to pick and choose what GCSEs to do and what college or university they, need, they want to go to, I was like, like, I know who I want to be. I know what I want to do. I know what I've got to do to get there. Um, so for yeah. ease of conversation, even though it, it, it didn't pan out this way, my kind of skeleton plan, if you like, was to finish my GCSEs on a Friday um, and start basic training on a Monday. I was that kind of zoned in on it. Yeah. And I actually, I walked out of school at 15 because I was the youngest in, I left school at 15 anyway, because my birthday's in the summer holidays, but yeah, you know, I walked out of school. Yeah. And you know, but 15, mm. probably just before actually. Uh, so yeah, 14 going on 15, and I walked three and a half, four miles to the Army Careers Office in Swindon, which is where home was at the, where I was living at the time. Um, mm. And and um, I uh, sort of walked to the Careers Office in Swindon and said, that, you know, I want to join the Army and just want to get the ball rolling. But I never knew what I wanted to do in the Army. I just knew I wanted to be in it. Yeah. And so yeah. I failed selection the first time round on a hearing test and then spent 18 months going backwards and forwards to all the shot outpatients, having grommets removed and hearing tests done and stuff. But in yeah. that 18 month period, education wasn't really, I'd left school at this point. I worked full time in a supermarket in Sw- Sainsbury's in Swindon, mm. you know, meeting your fish counter um, and other bits. And, and just, and just, that's what I did, you know, until, until I passed selection second time round. And then, so that was your your trajectory, right? And then you had your accident, you lost your arm. I mean, and then to kind of go from, so that was your your catalyst, right? You British Army <laughs> motorcycle accident, right? You were on, de- you've been on deployment. You came out of deployment safe, and then you 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 know it was, yeah, it was a motorcycle so, accident, right? Like like just sort of going back a little bit. I mean, so you know, yeah. I ended up joining a regiment. That's a mount. It's called mounted regiment. It's all horses and and stuff and riding on parades and whatnot like, i knew that's what i knew that's what i was going in what after i was sold the dream of of it was the king street royal horse artillery mm. after i sold the dream of, of that regiment you know i had i had aspirations to become a farrier um yeah. and a blacksmith and yeah. um but running parallel with all of that i i couldn't justify being in the military and even if only once not doing sort of the green army stuff, you know, operational tours and adventurous training. So before I tied myself down with, you know, that, uh, that, that line of work, you know, I, you know, I did Afghanistan in 2007, came back, trek through Nepal in the Himalayas. And then kind of, that's really when I sort of, you know, explained my dire wishes to my chain of command and said that I'm only here to be a farrier. Um, if it's not going to, if something's not going to get me in the forge, I'm not interested. Um, and yeah, I did a I did a review for Truth in the Colour, the Queen's Birthday Parade, and the following yeah. day, yeah, I was involved in a motorcycle accident whilst riding back oh, wow. to my barracks, which was St John's Wood at the time. Um, got no memory of it. Don't know how it happened. Um, it's probably a combination of me, you know, pissing about really, going a bit too fast, and who knows? But um, can't dwell on your mistakes, right? So. Yeah, but yeah, woke up sort of two two days later in hosp- in the Royal London at Whitechapel, and an arm and shoulder liner mm-hmm. amongst a plethora of other injuries, and went through the rehab process, which was six months. Went on a gradual return to work process, and ended up back in my regiment. Kind of, right? You know, found that I'm never going to be a farrier. Um, accepted that for what it was. Focused on the things I could do, like work on my fitness. I didn't want to be. You know, just because I was a little bit broken, I didn't want to be um, sort of the token, the, the the token ornament, if you like, sat in the corner collecting dust because I'm not very, I, I can't do anything else. So, you know, yeah, I, I could, 
couldn't do any I couldn't do press ups, mm-hmm. sit ups with one arm. Um we've got plates in that, so if you put too much weight for it, you can feel them tensing, like like stressing. Um Wow. But yeah, so I you could do most of you could do but you could do most yeah. of the fizz, right? And you were still a soldier, and you were, st- and you know, you've been to Afghanistan, so it was, it, 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 and you were, st- and that was your lifelong dream, right? You wanted to maintain in the in the in the, in the service. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, the army is, it's, 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 it's an institutionalized lifestyle. Um, it, yes, it's a job, yeah. but you know, first and foremost, you are, you are institutionalized. It is a lifestyle, um, which is basically it, it, it's you know, the pillars of that lifestyle are echoed around routine, discipline, uh, and so on. And so you knew every day, you knew where you had to be in what order of dress and what time you had to be there. Um, and it's, it's just kind of, I like that. It removed a lot Mm. of the thought process and if, and if problems did arise, you had the capacity to, you know, to, 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 to to work on those and overcome them. If you like, You you know, issues and obstacles uh, you know have many masks and many hats and a ten a penny aren't they so but you know i spent three years post injury back in back in my regiment you know going in oh, and wow. out of various medical boards um proving myself yeah. you know in the run-up to each one but the final one was in march 2012 mm. and uh walked into the room and there's there's more people in there this time. It was there was the doctor who I was familiar with, occupational mm-hmm. therapist, yeah. physiotherapist, and um, and they said, look, basically, long story short, mm-hmm. this is what I can't remember verbatim now, but basically said when you when you leave this room, you're no longer insured to do anything military ever again, including making cups of tea for anyone other than myself. So, oh wow, um, oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, that was it. Um, and the irony of that was, say, so my regiment had moved from St. John's Wood to uh, Woolwich, and um, yep. the, the new barracks are being opened. Um, were being opened by by Camilla Parker or Queen Camilla now, but she wasn't then. Um, to be to be opened, and because I was a regimental trumpeter who can't read a note of music, I might add, um, <laughs> then or now. Um, Fine. I had to play the uh, the royal salute for her arrival, and my medical board was before this arrival happened. So I had to say, look, you know, I've, I've got to play this this call. And then he's like, look, pretend I've not heard that, but as soon as you've done it, go back to your room, take your uniform off, uh, and 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 yeah, pack your bags basically. So um, I mean, that was that was that was that was the. That was the 12th of March, the 13th of March, the following day, I had my left ankle fused in Frimley Park Hospital. And then the day after that, the 14th of March, I was at Tedworth House, one of the Help for Heroes, Help for Heroes, well, the flagship recovery centre for Help for Heroes, and just spent my last six months kind of weighing up what I'm going to do with my life and, and, and whatnot. And so I just did like, a few courses and stuff, like to bump my CV up. Yeah, bearing in yeah. mind, I had, I had tunnel vision to be a farrier over the, the previous kind of nine years um, mm-hmm. and um, nine and a half years. And so after those, the 28th of September 2012 was my absolute final day in the military. Went back home to effectively my old room. Home was now in Somerset. And that's really when life began to kind of spiral downhill. Um, applying yeah. for work, couldn't find a job for love or money or how much I tried in fact, it was about eight months. And that eight months was 327 job applications. Of Shit. Which, one, of which not... nothing led to anything sub-basic. I think, do you know what? I had five replies out of the 330 almost that said, mm. you haven't got the skills or experiences we require. And you, know, you, you weigh yeah. up your experiences like when you first go out and, you know, what can I do? And you just you just think back to what you've done over them years and you know, my job in Afghanistan and stuff and the, the roles that I did, you know, either side of that. And it's kind of like, well, I've got managerial experience, you know, I can organize a piss up at a brewery essentially um, with no yeah. beer. Mm. Um, and, mm. um, and, um, and yeah, I, I think towards the end of that eight months, I was applying for a job as like a cleaner um, because I had no disposable income and that's basically what I was living on. Um, 
And I think that, you know, the, the, the final, the final straw that broke that camel's back was, um, I had to, I had a car at the time, um, and I had to retax and reinsure it. I went to pay for it online and my card declined. And, um, you know, I had oh. quite, I, I, I had money saved up, you know, the military is many things. It's also a perfect money saving exercise. Um, and I remember looking at my bank, and I had 15 pence to my name and, um, you know, running parallel, running parallel with that. And this, I think this is the key kind of thing with when you look at depression, uh, the depressee may not know they're depressed, but everyone else can see it. Um, so yeah. I was mm. depressed, the massive recluse, um, and mum and dad went out to work one mum and my stepdad went out to work one morning and um as they i got out of the shower and saw my reflection in the mirror and it was just like nothing like this it was like no color bit overweight gaunt mm. like, a, like a costume basically of you know, a disused costume that you've just pulled out of a box and uh, mm. and i just you know i said you know this is what life's got in store for me after everything i've been through i really won't be part of it i've been through enough and I tried hanging myself. Yeah, yeah I got halfway through doing it, and and um, I, for some reason the thought came over me: what, What's my mum going to say when she finds me? What's she going to do to my family? And yeah. that's basically when I went. I need to get back to London, and this was yeah. this is what this is August twenty thirteen. Mm. How the how the hell am I going back to London? I've got no money, and then it was the fair I got a job as a chauffeur, um, and that's kind of when. I began to start rebuilding my life and, you know, being a cyclist now, sometimes, so I moved, so, sorry, yeah, I, I moved to um, a village just outside Windsor called Raysbury. Yeah. Okay. We sometimes ride through it, um, Raysbury and Datchet on the way to Windsor, but um, yeah. for a bun run, but um, I lived in a caravan. Um, it was on, it was in someone's garden. But when I say garden, like it was like three acres of land. But, um, mm. I, think, I think they were like, they were more like stationary travelers. And yeah. Um, yeah. it was all some dodgy stuff going on. Like it was all like, I wanted to set up a direct debit to pay the rent on the caravan. It was only cash in hand and stuff and whatnot. <laughs> it's the goings on. It was all yeah, like, yeah, 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 and yeah. Stuff. And um, I mean, they were lovely people, lovely people, but I mean, the caravan was an absolute shit box. Um, and that's putting it <laughs> politely. Um, you know, it leaked. Uh, it would. The, the, in fact, the only luxury I had of that caravan was that I could flush it and run the taps. Um, but you know, I, you know, my job as a chauffeur, you know, I wasn't. It wasn't exactly. Uh, the salary was twenty three grand a year. Um, mm. And after my bills had been paid, I was left with peanuts. Mm. Um, and some months some months I couldn't afford to go and shopping like to get the basics, you know, food mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, so I would live on custard cream biscuits and cups of tea because I figured the biscuits would, you know, would fill me up breakfast, lunch and dinner until I got paid next. I'm going to get like, you know, uh, long life, like tins of beans and stuff and, and whatnot. Yeah. And then a few charities that helped me out as well, like military charities, you know, some days, some days you know, and as the delivery home delivery van would turn up or tesco's or whatever it was a charity called veterans charity um and you know just but it was they would only arrive through the intervention of the charity like, i'd never ask for help you know and i remember sitting in my in that caravan right underneath terminal five's flight path every 90 seconds i was watching the telly like the the, the the, the reception would drop out and um <laughs> but i remember sitting there with my cup of tea and biscuit and my, and my crust of creams thinking fucking there's gotta be something better than this i didn't mean to swear sorry <laughs> so and, you like. and, um, and um and and yeah that was that, that must have been 2014 and um i just remember having a bit of an epiphany of deciding to sort of you know, I'm surrounded by affluence and, 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 and success and wealth beyond anything I'd ever seen before and, and celebrity as well and stuff. And, and I just, I just decided like, you know what, what's, what's giving these people their get up and go like, what are these people doing when no one else is looking? Because I think that's when it matters most. 
Yeah. And um, I just began to kind of cherry pick kind of character traits from the clients in the back of my car. Like I spent, I probably spent more time with the clients than they did with their mm. own families. Um, mm. And these are high flyers in the city, you know, CEOs yeah. of like massive billion pound companies and uh, like finance companies and stuff. And, and um, yeah, it, it, for ease of conversation, it was like the value of time, like the things you can do before the working day starts and, and whatnot. And, uh, and that's kind of what I, I did. I, I'd go out for a walk 45 minutes before I needed to leave to go and pick someone up, you know, and it was always, it always quite surprised me how much more awake I was. Like, even if it was like a, a four o'clock start in the morning, I get up at half two, go out for a walk for, for free, just and ready to go. So I wouldn't need to get ready for work. Although that wasn't very often. Um, mm. But walk around Raceby Village um, and then get back ready to go and start the day. But yeah, and I think that opened so many doors of opportunity in itself. You know, I wrote myself off for so many opportunities in the past. Uh, it, it went in the run up to this kind of particular moment. But I, was just, I just decided, and it's still something I do now, is any opportunity I get, I don't, I don't care what it is. I'm just going to say yes. Um, you know, and so in the preceding years, really, like 2014, well, the, yeah, the summer of 2014, I was taken away to Egypt where I learned and qualified to, to scuba dive with Paddy. Mm-hmm. Came back from that. And then, um, and this was kind of the precursor to cycling, but um, I came back from that. And then the back end of 2014 through the latter end of 2015, I was, I sort of lent myself to the a selection process uh, to become part of a four man crew to row unsupported across the Atlantic ocean. Like it's the world's first at the time, all disabled crew. And yeah. so I didn't talk about rowing, but I was like, you know what, mm. I'm just going to, I'm just going to learn and be a sponge. And um, <clears throat> I went through that process. I was the only upper limb amputee. Everyone else was like legs, legs, um, singular or bilateral sort of amputated yep. and missing. And, um, I made it to the final five. Uh, I did the final selection with, with three of the selected crew, um, who, who would become the selected crew. And I got the phone call and they said, we we're going to go with someone else. And ironically, I wasn't disheartened. I think I still look at that, that one kind of thing, if you like, mm. as being my greatest achievement, like yeah. being unsuccessfully selected had be- ironically became my greatest achievement. And, and, and that's not like, like ultra positive mumbo jumbo, you know, you're just trying to say it to, you know, make, make yourself you know, prop yourself up kind of thing. Like I learned more about myself in that. I think it was about eight, six months or seven months or something. I learned more about myself in that time. And in spite of like other people's kind of very small minded comments, if you like, yeah. they say is of what I'm achieve, or what, what I'm capable of in spite of my limitations. Um, which I kind of carry over into other things. Um, yeah. Cycling obviously being that now, but yeah, I put the phone down from that call. I said, well, I need something else to do. Um, and mm-hmm. well, uh, a maybe, bike. go on. Well, maybe what we do is, because I think this might be a good place to take a break because we can talk about actually some of the incredible things you're doing with black sheep clothing with the man ride. Because yeah, I think people... People need to people need to know about some of the work you're doing there. So we're just gonna pop off to a break now. Welcome back, everyone. In this next section, we're gonna talk about mental health. Some people have good days, some people have bad days, and some people have more bad days than good. Dan has been picked by Black Sheep as a mental health ambassador and he does the man ride so dan how did the man ride come along how did black sheep come along and um, yes oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> and uh yes. how co- uh and does, uh where does it sit in i guess like things that are, i guess close to you within cycling uh yeah so um so i'm i'm black sheep's uk brand ambassador um and um 
That, do you know what? That came over, so I've always been a customer of Black Sheep, but the first pair of bib shorts I ever bought um, were a, a set of Black Sheep, um, Black Sheep shorts. And I just love the logo. I thought it was pretty cool. I loved it on the side of the shorts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, and it, you know, it was the first kind of expensive bit of kit that I'd ever bought for cycling. Anyway, I during, during the pandemic, I had made a, a reel. Um, and it was one of them voiceover things. And I just kind of hung all of yeah. my cycling kit that I had up in the kitchen with Zwift and my bike yeah. on the turbo. And, um, it was, I think it was that, um, this is a problem. Um, and it's an addiction and all that stuff and, and whatnot, making mm. light of making the joke about, you know, how I'm addicted to cycling kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. there was one pair of black sheep shorts and a jersey which which i had among the plethora of other things i had there and they saw it and reached out and then got me involved in um their uh, their man ride last year which was held at the time in sigma sports yeah. in oakham and oh, nice. from that and then yeah from that um we got to we got to the end of december and i got the email from from uh, from Teals and Black Sheep and just said, uh, um, we'd love to be your cycling apparel partner. Um, and I couldn't oh, believe it. And amazing. I was just like, so that's how that came about. And, you know, the, the Man Ride Initiative, yeah, I kind of, I still like, I look at the kit now and I just think, ironically, I think when I started to discover the power of social media through cycling, and and, mm. and what you can do with it. I was like, if I could ever work with a brand, I'd love to work with Black Sheep Cycling. I think because there's so much of Black Sheep Cycling that I just love about, you know, not just the kit they make, but like their their brand image as well and, yeah. and, and how they how they write their content. For me, the best mm. way of explaining that, when I first got into road cycling, I I just thought there was so much elitism on tap. Um and I just, I was like, I remember thinking like, do you know what? However I get into cycling or whatever, or however far I go into cycling, I want to be mm. part of the thing that removes that or, or whatever. And I said, do you know what? I used, I used to watch Red Bull TV and I used to watch, um, I used to watch yeah. like um, Rotorua and stuff, all the down and mountain bikers and, 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 and all of that. And the laughs that they used to have. And there's a friend of mm. mine, actually, who's ex Royal Marine, um, Ben Deakin, his name is, who rides for DMR bikes and muck off and all of that. It was a professional mountain biker, uh, uh, down a mountain bike racer. And I used to watch his edits and uploads and just see the laugh that they have and how it transpired over onto Red Bull TV and stuff. And I think, that's yeah. what I want in road cycling. And for me, Black Sheep kind of offered that, which is why I was bought into their kit. And then so to be a, yeah. a brand ambassador for them and, and whatnot, and so I waved that flag in the UK, it was it was kind of like a, a dream come true. Sounds really kind of over the top and wanky. Um, but yeah. Say it, that, it like. really was. Yeah, it's fucking brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as you were talking about, I guess the... How you like, uh, I just like, I guess the bands between people. Is that what you brought to the, the man rider up in Oakham? Yeah, like it's. I mean, my my approach to people, whether I know them or not, is relevant. Is I just treat everyone like I've known them for years, um, mm. and and I think it's it's done me well this far. Um, I'm I'm naturally a quite confident person, um, but yeah, I just you know, my approach to people anyway is that everyone's got a story, um, and I'm willing to listen, um, and. Um, yeah, that's what it is. But like, yes, yeah, have a laugh. Like, you always find something to laugh about. Um, take the piss about, whether it's at my own expense or not. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Like, um, ironically, I've always associated my kind of. If I was gonna label myself as a persona, it would be Chandler from Friends. Um, I'm not good with the advice, but can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? You know, and it's yeah, <laughs> um, and it's generally my approach. Like, if you can't laugh at yourself, give me a call. I will laugh at you. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. What, what what is it with what is it with the man ride that I guess the black sheep? Uh, so, do right. It's mental health the focus. man ride. 
the man ride itself. So Black Sheep was founded um, in 2015, I think he was. Um, and there were three fundamental pillars. They were the man ride, the woman ride, and um, Future Radicals, which looks at the under-23 kind of racing league. So like, like the future of the peloton. And, um, and it's just kind of those... As I've gotten older and more kind of versed in cycling, each one of those pillars is kind of aligned with a value of mine, like supporting other people, yeah. you know, bringing others along. But with the, with the man ride, with the man ride, it's, you know, the man ride was started in 2016. <clears throat> um, and it was all about changing the conversation and the stigma around men's mental health. And every year, so it's a, glo- it's a, it's a global event, you know, it's, yeah. it, it takes part over the same weekend at the various locations. Obviously, Black Sheep being an Australian-based company, it's a small company with a global reach. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're based out of Brisbane. Um, it, 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 the man ride, last year it was... It was, uh, I can't remember the full ins and outs of the ride itself, but it was just rides that took place over the same weekend this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, the challenge was to ride 200 kilometers. And it was about, it wasn't about who could ride it the fastest. It never is who can ride it the fastest. It's not a race. Um, yeah. But it's about, it's about putting people together, having a meaningful conversation, start or starting a conversation in a safe space, doing something that we all love doing cycling um and the 200 kilometers yes it's a massive it's a massive distance for most people Mm. but look what look what you can achieve by sort of bringing all of those things you know together and um and what i like about being the brand ambassador in the uk for black sheep is it's kind of exposed me to this world of yeah like social media marketing and and event planning and organizing and stuff and it's things that i could probably have done anyway but it's yeah. really given me a platform to do those things like like not just wear a brand of kit that i you know that, that, that i that i love um yeah and I, I buy into you know their 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 values and so on but in a professional capacity it's also helps me to expand on what i'm capable of doing and i think so it's it's multifaceted really, but that's kind of why I like doing it. And like, I hope it goes into next year as well, but we'll see. Yeah, That's good to hear. That's good to hear. So Dan, on your Instagram, you have Pearson and cycles and classified hubs on there. Mm. How did, yeah. how did that come about? Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, like a lot of people ask if I'm sponsored, I'll buy them. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, they, so classified give me the, the hub and the wheel set and stuff, which is which is lovely. Am I sponsored by Amazing. them? I, I guess by proxy I am to 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 mm. a very minimal degree. Um, yeah. But this all came about. So um, I got married the end of May um, this year. Congratulations! Uh, Congrats. Thank you very much. And um, we went on a honeymoon. We came back. I'd had two weeks mm. of cycling, so I decided to sort of go out get a couple of rides in and I just finished doing a hundred kilometer ride. Um, I start to flag a little bit and, um, and, uh, stopped in at, uh, the Putney. Um, and stopped in there and I posted on my stories that I was in it, in it, like getting something to eat and stuff. Yeah. And great to be back riding and whatnot and, and all of that. And when I came to, I was in there 45 minutes, give or take. When I came to leave, uh, anyone that's been in the as you walk through the door, literally on the left, you've got the racks for hanging your bikes up. Mine was the yeah. only bike there, um, and it it wasn't there. It was it, it wasn't there. Oh, so no. the knee jerk reaction was like, "Has someone moved my bike?" And I was like, "No." I was, I was like, "Oh, oh shit! Someone's pinched my bike. Someone stole my bike." And that's kind of when it all, the, the, the realization of that happened. And I always thought, and this was, this is probably poor on my part. Mm. I figured, you know, being a one arm cyclist, you know, my bike is adapted for one arm and it's quite obvious yeah. that it's adapted for one arm. <laughs> um, no one's going to yeah. steal it. No one's going to steal it because they can't really sell it. But you know, that's, that's naive, naive on my part. And um, yeah, 
um, sort of shared it on social media that that's what happened. And literally, it was like the whole world kind of descended onto my 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 uh, my, my my Instagram page to share this story and, yeah. and whatnot. And it was really like it was really like humbling, like to a degree where I've always been the sort of person that yeah, you know, I enjoy cycling. I've built yeah. a community. Well, I haven't built a community. I'm part of a community mm-hmm. in cycling. And yeah. whatnot, you know, people within the, the circles know, without sounding arrogant, know who I am. Yeah, um, <laughs> which is nice. I, I I quite like being able to go somewhere and have a conversation with somebody mm. about anything. Um, and 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 everyone shared it, and I think it went as far north as Scotland. It went as far down south as Cornwall. It went all the way. I had friends in America that had shared it. And believe it or not, there was a cycling group or team in Nigeria who sold it. But like, as far as London goes, I just remember thinking, like, yeah, good luck trying to sell that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I still haven't found it. I mean, I, I occasionally oh. look on like Gumtree and eBay and stuff. I, haven't found it. I reckon they've stripped it and and whatnot. But mm. um, but yeah. So moving past the bike theft. Um, mm. Pearson's got in touch. Pearson's, you know, the world's oldest bicycle company, still yeah. family owned and operated, based down in um, in uh, Sheen. Like Sheer, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Sheen. Yeah. She- no, Sheer is that little pretty village in Surrey. That's near it? me. Yeah, Sheen. Um, yeah, Sheen. Yeah. And it was Will Will Pearson who reached out to me and just said, like, basically, sorry, don't, um, sorry to hear about your bike. Don't want to jump in your bike's grave, but we'd love to. <laughs> um, build you this bike, and you know, yeah. it was, it's their new, it's their new shift. So, if you know oh, anything nice. about Pearsons and their models, their previous aero road bike model was the mine goes to eleven, okay. um, and yeah. the shift is kind of a, a redesigned, upgraded version of that. And um, yeah, I, I I sort of lined Pearsons and Lacquer up. They're my insurance company. Mm-hmm. Um, Lacquer paid my. What what you know my, my 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 insurance payout to Pearsons and whatever was left, Pearsons kind of you know foot the bill, which was really really kind of them and and um, oh, as part of that process, Will had contacted Classified, um, the shifting the shifting um, yeah. the shifting um, yeah, yeah. company, and um, and and also bought in Wahoo as well, and they gave me a um, oh that's great a Roam. Which is really really cool and really really Amazing. fine and yeah, that was a two month process, um, hmm. all in all. But yeah, like the um, what I like about classified, um, aside from them giving me a hub and a wheel set, was um, it's just a brilliant piece of kit. Like I don't know how yeah. the technology how it works for Batum, but like it's um, it's just. It's, it's game changing, really is. Like for the first time in my cycling kind of life, if you like, I now have full autonomy over every single one of my gears. Where on my Cervelo, um, it was set up with Shimano Synchro Shift. I had full synchro, so I never yeah. really had any control over the over the chain rings at the front. It was dependent on where the chain was yeah. at the back. It's like a semi-automatic car to some to some degree. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas now it's kind of like, if I want to go into the little ring, I can press the satellite button on my handlebars and it goes into the little ring. Uh, again, I press it again, it goes into the big ring, regardless of what gear I'm on at the back. And it, it's not, I mean, obviously that's not, Classify wasn't designed with, 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 with paracycling in mind. Um, however, it's just become a, uh, it's, it's just, it's just become a, um, it will be, it's become that, you know, for me. So, and I imagine other people who have upper limb issues with cycling, if that's what they want to do. Mate, yeah. shout, <laughs> shout out, class, shout out, classified. No. I didn't. Do you know? What, I never, I never thought about it that way. That's massive. Yes, yeah, it's, it, it's it's massive, and it's it, it's nice being able to dictate what gear, what gear, and I want, and uh, uh, without being dictated to, so to speak. <clears throat> but I met classified How the does- team. Um, at um, yeah. Ruler Ruler Live, which was my first oh, Ruler yeah. proper bike show. Anyway, 
Um, mm. But yeah, Matt, Matthias, uh, who's the co-founder, and um, absolute, just, 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 they're just really cool, really nice yeah. people. Aside from designing this wonderful bit of kit, um, yeah. How how do you shift on a classified hub for anyone who doesn't know? So, the the first thing to look at with classified, and and it's shifting is if you look at your front derailleur, with classified you don't have one. So it's a one it, it's a one okay. by system that operates as two by. Yeah. Um. So what they've done effectively is remove the front derailleur and then put the functionality of what would have been the front derailleur into the rear hub. Um. And this is where my knowledge and understanding kind of goes out the window. There is literature, which I could read to you. Um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not on my computer, but then I don't want to kind of, I don't want to kind of be fake if you like. So, um, yeah. but um, so yeah, operates as a one, a one by it operates as a two by system on a one by, on a one by system. Um, so if I want to change up into the big ring, what will, what would be the big ring? There's mm-hmm. a little satellite button, which operate, we operate. So when you press it and it works quicker or at the same speed that you blink an eye and it will, it, it will shift up or down under full load up to a thousand Watts. And so Jeez. I've tried this going up here. Well, I mean, a thousand Watts for the minute, hopefully it will come around a thousand Watts. <laughs> Is, is well past my um, functionality, m- m- most cyclists' functionality. But yeah, yeah, you know, I don't have to worry about you know when you when you do you know flick up into the big ring with the front derailleur, you've got to wait for that bite point. Yeah. Sometimes that bite point comes a bit too late, um, or if you're not spinning quick enough, your chain will come off. You know, whether yeah. it goes yeah. to the inside or the outside. So then you've got to faff around with that. It kind of eliminates that. You know, there's no cross chaining. Um, and I think this is the only bit of literature I can remember. It improves chain. Um, oh, what's the word? I had it then. Efficiency. Tension. Efficiency. Yeah. Efficiency by about 530%. So <laughs> oh, wow. that's what it says. I don't know how you get 530%, but like, yeah, it's, it, it's brilliant. So I, I really rate, I really rate the system and that's not just because, you know, I've got one, um, and 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 they've they've been really generous to me. Um, I rate it because it is a brilliant bit of kit. Um, and if anyone tells you otherwise, you don't need that negativity in your life. So, think with friends, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 right about on social media, which generally uh, is most mo- mo- most arguments in it. So, what's going to be the most likes? <laughs> I think uh, uh, with all that, let's go to the break. Everyone, welcome back. We're going to go into the Q and A section here, uh, as we do with most of all our podcasts. A crucial question here, Dan. I know you live in Southwest London, but yeah, are you Richmond or are you Regents? If you're cycling around in in circles, ah, uh, do you know what? How long have I got to answer this? Is it, is it <laughs> as long as you want. As long as you want. So, so go for it. You've got the floor. Park. Richmond Park, thank you. Richmond Park holds a very special place in my cycling heart. Um, I used okay. it as um, when I when I was training for the Invictus Games. I used it as a. Um, just gonna throw that. In, just gonna throw that in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about Race Across America? No. <laughs> um, um, I when I was training for the Invictus Games, I, I had a massive financial barrier. Um, well, I couldn't afford a coach or even a Zwift membership. So I would use Google and YouTube to train um, and research nutrition, basic nutrition tips. And um, mm-hmm. it was toward the Richmond Park, the segment, um, which I used to use to indicate like the trial and error sort of phase of my of my self, self-research self training, if you like. Mm. obviously if, if i put a quicker time than say last week then obviously i was doing something right and that's why i went but i do like regent's park yeah yeah i like regent's park it's nice it's relatively flat um, <laughs> um 
and well it is flat isn't it let's be honest um yeah and it's just i think because you're quite close to central london and various other things like my favorite bakery is um fortitude bakehouse so it's mm-hmm. nice but do you know what? sometimes I, i've got a thing what i do called park life and it's literally yeah. i'll ride um i sometimes i go as far down as as um bushy park so yeah, go around, well, go up, up and down Bushy Park a few times, yeah. and ride Richmond Park, uh, ride at the Hyde Park, the the Regents Park, and then stop in for a coffee, um, and then ride home or something or, or whatever. But so, Regents Park, to digress, sorry, Regents gone. Park of the two, Regents Park is my favourite. So where are you stopping for coffee then? So you said Fortitude, is it Fort? Because uh, I said this last time, I've never been to Fortitude. I just haven't. It's, 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 I haven't got anything personally against them. I'm sure they're really good guys, and I hope you, maybe one day they get on the podcast. Fortitude. I tell you mm-hmm. what, the fact that you've never had fortitude, like your life is the poorer for it. So the sooner you get there, the better. But his bank account, his bank account's definitely better for it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. No, do you know what? Fortitude Bakehouse is just great. It's the the the, 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 the things that they turn out. You would never find on the shops of any shop. Um, mm. um, like, I mean, you'll, you'll pay like four pound fifty, say, for a for a like a morning bun, and the morning bun is basically it's a it's a uh, what's well, a big bun filled to the brim, I might add, with whatever filling it is. Usually, like custard and blueberries is my favourite. Like, you bite into it, nice. like, make sure you've got another hand or something to catch, because it, it's worth every single <laughs> penny. But when I'm having coffee, Rafa, Rafa is 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 a is a favourite. Um, Brewer Street, a couple, yeah, Brewer Street, Rafa Clubhouse seems to be like a, a hot spot for most cyclists, um, and and sort of within our within our groups as well, um, yeah. But I do favour the small independent coffee, um, yeah. Ooh. Um, what was it? shops is the wrong word, like the, the coffee. Uh, small business coffee shops yeah yeah small businesses that's it so whether it's uh whether it's uh, a little van on the side of the road or it's uh, a small independent shop um i'll always favor them because and this is what i tell anyone that's you know never had, not into coffee if you want a decent cup of coffee go mm. to somewhere where coffee is their sole source of income because you'll guarantee you'll get a good coffee yeah. Whereas any of the chains, if they give you a shit one, well, there's hundreds and thousands of others to fall back on. So it's not really gonna, <laughs> it's not, it's not really gonna <laughs> dent the pennies, is it? Dent, dent, dent the, uh, dent the wallet. So dent the account. Yeah, I always Wait. find when they start like weighing the coffee, you're like, I am in a good place there, and then they get yeah. your spoon out and then like taking it out. You're like, this That's is precision. It. That's it. It might, it might take a bit longer, but do you know what? Have a conversation. Everyone's got a story. Oh, Dan, you're a man of wisdom, mate. Yeah. So, oh, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you've done the race across America, which we didn't get into, but it's well documented. But, favorite climb? Are you a London based climb when you. You know your recovery into mental health. Is there a climb you benchmark yourself on? Is there a place you've cycled in the world? Where are you? Where's your kind of favourite place to go uphill, essentially? Mallorca. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been once, and it was like I've. I can't wait to go back. Um, uh, my favourite climb. I've got Mallorca. Any of them, mm. basically. Um, yeah. Although. I did Sacalobra. That's just famous for being famous. There's so many better climbs in Mallorca. Um, mm. um, what's the what's the climb with the Ripsol garage at the top in Mallorca? I don't, I've never been to Mallorca. We You're asking been. the wrong guy. <laughs> there is a there is a I can't I can't remember what it's yeah, called. It's really... But that climb in Mallorca is my favorite. The views are spectacular. Um, in the UK, do you know what? Mm. The, the the segment in Richmond Park that goes from Kingston Gate to Richmond Gate is probably my yep. favourite climb in London just because I, I prefer hills that are long drags because you can pace them better. Um, and I think you get... I can't stand short or sharp... Well, I can't stand sharp climb whether they're short or long. Um, mm. I can't stand up as a cyclist and pedal. So I'm literally at the mercy of... Oh, of course. Of, 
my yeah. legs. Um, um, but that climb, the the segment, yeah, Kingston Gate to Richmond Gate, um, mm. is is my favourite climb. I what's the name of that climb called? Sawyer. Is that um, Sawyer's Hill? I think Sawyer's is where like Hampton every, to Richmond. I feel like every hill is called Sawyer's Hill in Richmond Park. I don't actually know what any of them are called. That, yeah. That, but that, I know that it's, hill, it's you, the car park, right? If, you, if, you, if, if you're like, looking at it from Caliche at Roehampton Gate, right, it would yeah. be, if there's no trees and look straight up to the back of the park, you'd see it. Broomfield? No, Broomfield's Broomfield. left out of Caliche and then up. But you know where where where, Broom, where where Dark Hill finishes? Yeah, yeah, and that roundabout. You can go left for go out to Kingston. Mm. Um, if you go right, it'll take you up that hill. Um, and it, oh, it's I know the one you mean. Mm. I know the one you mean. And there's like a car park on the left hand side. It's got that fancy cafe sort of halfway up it, and all the car parks are. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's actually pretty with, decent with that great view like over that. Surrey. As we're Mate. as we're talking about Richmond Park, there was one thing that Cam forgot to ask you, Dan. Which do you think is more pro, Regent's oh, Park yeah. or Richmond Park? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think Richmond Park, um, and I say this because you've got more choice of. Uh, gradients to shoot whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise up the middle or whatever you've also got if you're cycle if you're into cyclocross you've got the off-road bits um but yeah there are a few pros that use um richmond park but then also there are a few people that think they're pros that use it as well uh, uh, do you mean do you mean plastic pros <laughs> yeah if you like yeah <laughs> and they make you know as well like that's 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 that that's the attitude i could never stand in cycling all right, like in the amateur. So, yeah, mate. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> do you, what? I mean, generally speaking, what do you think is the most overrated product thing in cycling? Talking about this now, that's oh. a good segue to. What do you think? It could be anything. It doesn't yeah. have to overrated. be like a physical product. It could oh, be anything. What? Them are savers. Them are savers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, is that what they're called? R savers, you know, yeah, things that, yeah, 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 that you, you, that you, you, you buckle to your saddle, right, and it pokes out the back. Do you know what? You might as well, you might as well just put a piece of kitchen paper on, on the back of your bike, you know, it'd be about much use. Um, <laughs> so fold them yourself as well, don't you? Know, you on the there, wings. There, there, there are many bits of overrated bits of kit um i can't i'm having a you know what'll happen i'll think of about four when we get off the when we finish but <laughs> you stop recording but um <laughs> but definitely the r saver i look at all oh, mud guards and uh, there's some mud guards as well you mm. put onto your your seat post and then like throughout the ride the, the whole mud guard sort of swung round to the left and i was like <laughs> not even covering the wheel at this point and it's like Bin it off. You might as well get an R saver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, last question, and I think um, you know, thematically, we need to have this white bib shorts. You know, what? we're in the winter white, now. Oh, white bib shorts. Yeah, white bib shorts. Are you? Are we going to see you for the for the spin cycle social wearing white bib shorts? Are they on your Absolutely horizon? Not, are black yeah. sheep. <laughs> I think black sheep do no black sheep don't do white bibs as far as I'm aware. Um, I don't know. I just think I just think for the same reason you don't you shouldn't really wear white boxes. <laughs> I mean, I say you shouldn't. I mean, you can wear what you want. You know, I'm not I'm not the I'm not the authority on fashion, but um, um, no, I, I just it's just it's just asking to get dirty, isn't it? Like. How long would they stay white for? Even after you've washed them? Probably. It all yeah. I mean, quite a, big, a lot of people have grey socks, don't they? I mean, that's what white. I think. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Do you know what? Do you know what? I can sit and take the piss all day about white bib shorts. But um, to be honest, I think if that's, your, if, if that's your bag, if that's your thing, then crack on. Like, why, why, why should anyone, anyone else's opinion be, you know, you know, um, influence what 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 you wear. So, 
Um, if you like wearing white boot shorts, what wear white boot shorts? If you don't like wearing, them, well, don't buy them. So, <laughs> so Dan's on the fence. And if anybody from Black Sheep uh, is listening to this podcast, because you know we're giving you some shouts out, and you would like to make a, a pair of white boot shorts, it's at Spin Cycle Podcast on Instagram. You know where we are. <laughs> But if white sheep, no, if black sheep made white shorts, then there'd be like white sheep cycling or just sheep. It could do, yeah. Oh, could do. I've, all, I've, I've always, because there's, there's quite a few black sheep brands. You've got black sheep coffee, black sheep cycling. Oh, I, yeah. I, I remember before before I um, sort of started working with black sheep, um, I did ask, um, um, I mean, the, the person I speak to in Black Sheep um, you know, in Australia is, is, is a girl called Brie. Absolutely. The whole team over there are just wicked. Yeah. Um, I got them to help me make a real mm. once and then, you know, when I was ordering some kit and stuff. And, um, they're just absolutely mm. brilliant. Um, I, I love them. Um, but I did ask, I remember asking her and I said, uh, I said, is, is, is it Black Sheep Coffee like a subsidiary of Black Sheep Cycling? And she's like, no, what's Black Sheep Coffee? I mean, oh, it's a... It's a <laughs> It's a um, it's a brand of coffee here, obviously in the UK. So, um, yeah. Every, but every time I see it, and I got my black sheep kit. I mean, black sheep's all I've got now in kit. But, um, um, but every time I, I always get, I get a picture. So, yeah. Good. Um, look, Dan, thank you so much for being on the podcast, mate. Um, thank you. For having I me. hope that people. No, I hope that people really got to know you a lot better I, I know you relatively well um but i and i knew parts of your story i didn't know that in depth so like thanks for sharing with us i know it sounds a bit strange but thank you for sharing your story man no worries. um i know you said you'd have got nothing i know you said you got nothing to plug but where can people find you how do people get involved with black sheep in your man rides yeah you give us a brief synopsis of 30 seconds yeah, so you can find me. I'm 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 pretty active on Instagram. Um, so at the One Armed Wonder, um, and I do have a Great TikTok name. channel, but I mean I don't really use it. Same name, the One Armed Wonder. Um, occasionally, I maybe I should use it more. Um, and if you want to sort of get in touch with Black Sheep and sort of look at what they're what they've got, you, yeah, you can find them at Black Sheep underscore CC. Um, or go to Google and type Black Sheep Cycling in. And um, the kit's fantastic, yeah. And I'm not, that's, that's not me being biased yeah. either. It's pretty good kit. It's very good kit. Cool. Well, yeah, I'm done. Thank you, NJ. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. And well. uh, we'll, see, we'll see you next week in the podcast. Bye. 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 Cheers.